Barbara wins the uh, weather predictions this morning. Uh, mine was 22. Weatherman was 19 degrees this morning, so uh, he didn't yeah. stand a chance. And obviously, I didn't either. It is Friday, October 15th, and believe me, I am absolutely elated today because we are joined by icons in the game. We really are. So, first of all, let me do this. Galaxy! Galaxy! That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM. For everybody that's joining us live on Facebook Live this morning, so happy to have you along because today we have Canadian icons. Uh, yeah, not American ones, Canadian icons. And believe me, you're going to love this. Stonebolt is in the house. Yes, they are. Here's Love Struck right here at Galaxy. <laughs> Are you okay, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, first of all, Ray, let me tell you how elated I am to be able to meet you both uh, and uh, do this interview. I've been a big fan, as I say, way back in the day. Well, excellent. Thanks for that, man. It's an absolute pleasure. Now, uh, at the same time, uh, I better let you know what we're playing. So, we're playing Love Strike right now. Next up is Price of Love, Rolling Down the Highway, Bottom Line, and then we're going to can it out with your most requested song here at the moment is Don't You Hide It. Oh, cool. Yeah. And believe me, you're getting quite a few requests for that one right now. That's right. Right. Um, now, Ray, are you in the um, recording room? I am, uh, my home studio, yes. Okay, uh, I was just looking at the axe in the background there. It's a nice looking guitar. Yeah, um, I got a bunch in here. There's, there's probably about 30 all around the room right now. You can't quite see them all, but yeah. Awesome. Um, there's a whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> love that. Absolutely love that. Unfortunately, uh, I'm a superstar in my bedroom, if you know what I mean. I wouldn't do it to anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can play everything. I used to be a roadie back in the day. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. well, actually, I'm, I'm a fully qualified engineer as well. I, I not only do recording, but I do front of house as well. And I have toured and worked with some of the biggest names in the world, literally, um, on stage. Um, but... I love doing this kind of stuff, where I actually get to meet you guys uh, on an even playing field, if you know what I mean. Yes, absolutely. How many countries this morning? Was it 84? 84. 84. 84 countries are tuned in this morning. That's, nice. not, that's not bad. We are, we are literally a global radio station. We're heard everywhere. Where are you located? We're in the east coast of the North Island of New Zealand. Oh, okay, yeah. Three hours drive. Um, the North Oops. Island of New Zealand, yeah. Yeah, Dave says that it was a pit stop for him. He came in, had a beer and left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good idea. Let's go live to the desk, guys. And uh, from me to you guys, welcome to Galaxy. All right, thanks. Thanks for having us. That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, and well, you know something, guys? 
absolutely elated today because, well, I used to play with these guys as a very, very young DJ, and over the years I've grown a lot of respect for this particular band coming out of, of course, Canada. These guys are icons. We're joined today by two members of Stonebolt, and I'm talking to David and also to Ray, uh, David Wells and Ray Roper, and it is such a pleasure to have these guys with us this morning. Uh, Sharon Marie White is joining us this morning as well. Nice to have you on board. And Dan Washburn. Hey, you brother man. Welcome back to Galaxy. Uh, welcome to Galaxy, guys. Nice to have you on board. Thank you for having us. It, it would be even nicer if we could be there in person, a little bit warmer than we are here. Yeah, you're coming into wintertime yeah. now, aren't you? Yeah. Where, where, when yeah. do you put your clocks... Uh, is it back? You're back into winter, isn't Seven, it? Forward into summer. Over. When do you put your clocks back? Uh, uh, good question. I think in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it can't November. be too far. 7th of November. 7th of November, I've been told. Oh, good. Yeah, I've done no. that, right? Yeah, yeah. Now uh, we know. Yeah, no, uh, keeping that in mind, you know, Christmas is not too far away as well. Oh, yeah, it's creeping up fast. It is. Yeah. The last, the last two years have really put perceptions of time just out of, out of whack. You know, it's uh, yeah. you go through these, these, these clumps of time that just seem to vanish, and then all of a sudden it was like, uh, I think there was summer. You know, and now it's gone. Yeah, I do that usually uh, at least twice a year when I wake up after a good binge. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, that, that's usually when the wife goes to the mother-in-law's, you know what I mean? Uh, absolutely, I <laughs> what, do. what she doesn't know won't hurt me. Um, <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. Uh, Ray, you're one of the founding members of Stonebolt, and uh, you're in the band uh, Perth and Boy back in the day, literally. Tell me a little bit about that. How did this transition come about? Well, in the beginning, um, actually it goes way back. It's, it's a story of, you know, a band that got together when they were, you know, quite young, like maybe even teenagers, so like 19 or something. Um, we started jamming together. We, uh, you know, had visions of maybe becoming a band and, and actually followed it all through. Ended up writing some songs and then connecting up with, with David down the road. And uh, so we started in a basement and we ended up, you know, in a hotel in, on Sunset Strip in L.A. on a record label. Um, it's kind of a rag to riches story in a sense because we were a, a solid band and a family. You know, we, we grew together, we learned our craft together and ended up scoring a record deal together. It was a true band experience as opposed to, you know, getting studio guys in or whatever. So in that sense, I'm, I'm really thankful because it really created a sense of loyalty and family within all, all the bros, right? We, we, were like, uh, we were like a brotherhood. And, and back in those days, as you know, it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't a copy-paste situation. It was just, you know, step by step. You know, it was like two steps forward, one step back. Um, kind of like that board game called Snakes and Ladders, you know? You hit the spinner and, you know... And if you're lucky, you advance three paces, and if you hit the wrong one, then, then it's like back down the slide, and you start back up. <laughs> there, there was no overnight thing, but yeah, we were we were uh, brothers in arms. Believe me, I know what you're talking about. Now, uh, back in the day, you joined up with W Stewart Promotions and landed a recording studio, a uh, record kind of deal with Parachute Records. Now, I remember Parachute Records. What happened to these guys? Oh, well, that's a, that's a classic story of the industry, actually. Um, Parachute was started by Russ Reagan, who's, who's an icon in the, in the music biz. Um, to begin with, and the word has it that he signed Elton John in the early days. Like, he had some huge, huge credits. So he, he started the, this custom label gave, named the Parachute, the and it was a subsidiary of Casablanca. Um, and then it was shooting upwards like a like a, like a rocket and then but Neil Bogert the president of Casablanca died suddenly and when that happened it's like the 
lifted, and somebody just pulled the plug on parachute, everything stopped. And uh, we had love struck on the charts, and it just disappeared off the charts. And it goes to show you how how political and, and how money driven the, the the music business was in those days. Uh, I guess still is, but um, it's unfortunate because Parachute was a very uh, upcoming and strong label with with good backing, and it, and it just it it Neil Bogart dying. It was literally its demise. I yeah, understand. The song, I understand. The song was moving up the Billboard charts at uh, ten points a week with a bullet uh, until the directive came through to to freeze not only us but the other artists that were on the label at the time too, and it just plummeted. And we were uh, we didn't know what was going to happen next. Uh, luckily, uh, our 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 managers and a lawyer were able to negotiate us out of that deal we had we had the album but the keep it alive album was fully recorded there was a release date set the artwork had been approved everything um and instead of it being frozen they negotiated a deal for us to get out of that deal and re-sign with another label which turned out to be rca uh slash bmg now, uh, uh, Sharon Marie White, she just said to me, oh my God, I loved, I still, I will still love you. Uh, fans still remember the song across the board. They really, really do. It, it's got longevity, as you said, Ray. Uh, it's got legs. Tell me something about uh, I Will Still Love You, because uh, believe me, uh, this is a fantastic track. How did you come to the lyrics? Well... I have to admit that um, that was a song that was submitted to us by, by Warner Publishing um, through Walter Stewart, our producer at the time. And to be, to be perfectly honest, we didn't have full control, creative control at that point. So we were obliged to do um, demos of, of a couple songs that were submitted by, by the record company and by um, specifically Warner Publishing, and that was one of them. So uh, I didn't write the lyrics for that, although we wrote, you know, 90% of all the other material. Um, but what I can tell you is uh, what we, we recorded that song and, uh, you know, it, it went nuts and got picked up and, and made a lot of waves. And one day we were playing the Whiskey Go-Go in, in L.A. on Sunset Strip. And some guy comes out of the crowd. And he goes, hey, hey. And I, I'm like, what? What? I bend down on the stage, still got my guitar on. He goes, I'm Robert Strauss. I wrote that song. And I go, oh, well, thanks. Nice to meet you. And he disappeared into the crowd, and I never saw him again, ever. <laughs> well, I've, I've, got a little, I've got a little thing to add to that. Uh, I recently connected with him on Facebook. Oh, he really? Told to, he told me to tell you hi, and he's out there. He's still involved in in music in in the la area very so, cool yeah yeah very cool uh, facebook's good for something <laughs> it certainly is uh jimmy bell's uh, online as well nice to have you on board jimmy it really really is uh, we must catch up sometime very very soon i've got something i want to talk to you about i really do um of course uh jimmy bell uh these days lead guitarist with the band autograph oh yes yeah. Very, very cool. And uh, I really want to have a chat with Jimmy in the near future. Now, uh, guys, we opened the show with Love Struck. Tell me a little bit about this track, because believe me, uh, this is a fantastic piece of work. Well, thanks for that. You want to take this one, David? Um, yeah, there's a really interesting story behind Love Struck, actually. Um, shortly after signing with Parachute Casablanca, um, the label and our producer uh, were approached by a film production company and the director um, uh, do you remember his name? No. He, um, uh, not Blake Edwards but something similar to that. Anyway, he was a fairly well known pr uh, uh, director at the time who had made his mark doing a lot of like horror movies, Scream Queen kind of things. And uh, they were in pre-production for a feature called Blood Rock. And they wanted a band uh, to do the soundtrack. And actually there was uh, 
a character in the movie who was a, a guitar player, singer, songwriter, who was um, actually became possessed. And I think, um, correct me on this, Ray, but wasn't there a thing where he uh, he signed a pact with the devil um, for eternal whatever? Uh, but but we were commissioned to write a, a song or songs for the movie. And Ray was actually going to be screen tested to appear to be one of the actors, if, if not that main guitar guy in the movie. Um, and after quite a lot of hype and we recorded the entire version of the song called Blood Rock, um, the funding for the movie fell through and Casablanca Parachute said, OK, well, we want you to go back and rewrite the lyrics and re-sing the track and by this time like disco had caught fire everything had to be disco so the uh, head of marketing was a guy named steve mccormick and he was really into the nightclub disco scene in hollywood and stuff and he wanted me and ray to rewrite the lyrics as, as like a boy girl meet you on the dance floor fall in love at first sight so it turned from being this really dark, kind of apocalyptic, um, thematic movie theme song into being, you know, hey baby, <laughs> the first sight. Yeah, so Blood Rock, Blood Rock was the original title. We changed it to Love Struck, changed all the lyrics, and uh, you know, and it was climbing the charts. It was, it was, well, it was a hit. It was, it would have gone higher, I suppose, if. Uh, Neil hadn't have died, but um, yeah, you would never think that the original lyric was blood rock and that it was kind of a dark uh, subject matter. <laughs> well, I, I think uh, places like 54, for instance, have got a lot to answer for. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I really do. Uh, now, I've got a fan question for you guys. As a fan, how do we get hold of you? Are you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? Are you on Instagram? Uh, but more importantly, guys, do you respond? Um, yeah, I'm on Facebook. I'm not on Twitter and Instagram, but uh, yeah, Ray Roper on Facebook. Um, I think David's on there too. And yeah. yes, we do respond. Oh, yeah. David Goodwill's on Facebook, but more importantly, there is a Stonebolt Facebook page. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's Stonebolt Band. Nice. Now, do you have a website as well? More importantly, can we buy, mu uh, buy you know, your music on your website? Uh, rather than going to the usual platforms, you know, like Spotify and iTunes and stuff like that, but right there on your website, do you have a merch store? Can we buy merch off you uh, um, in any place? Timely, timely question that that you ask that because we're right now um, in the midst of doing a deal to have our music properly uh, available online, both for downloads and, and streaming. Very, very cool. Uh, but believe me, if you do have merch, uh, let us know so that we can actually uh, promote you and get, you know, a few sales happening for you as well. Uh, we, when you said, you know, you do uh, answer everybody that gets in touch with you, uh, I personally don't. Literally, a uh, number of reasons. Uh, first reason is I never really have the time, to be honest with you. But more importantly, uh, guys, if you do get, I think you're going to get about another 5,000 Facebook fans. You're going to have nothing else to do all day. Yeah, that's true. You know, and nice you, problem to have. Yeah, well, I tell you what, you might need to employ somebody. I got a Barbara. Everybody needs I one of them. Barbara. <laughs> I, I got a Barbara. I really do. Yeah. She she does so well. Tim Steinreich is on board. Nice to have you on board, brother man, from the Mighty One Band coming out of Canada. And he says, "Hello, Barbara. Hello, Barbara. <laughs> nice to have. Uh, believe me." Uh, Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful artist in his own right. And, uh, well, you know something? He's been listening to you since he was uh, a nipper as well, i got to be honest with you. A nipper. A nipper, <laughs> yeah. Knee-high. One of those fellas. <laughs> yeah, I think he still had the beard back then, though, i got to be honest. <laughs> 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 He's got a wonderful beard, he really does. Uh, now, having said that, tell me a little bit about The Price of Love. You know, uh, I made the fatal mistake of uh, saying yes when the wife asked me on a leap year to marry her. Um, so I paid my price. What is the price of love? 
um, well, from my perspective, um, I remember I remember wanting to write a song that was kind of maybe Floydish a bit with with that kind of ethereal intro thing that you know with the flange symbols and all that. We're, we're kind of pushing towards a, a Floyd kind of sound, um, but the price of love lyric basically meant, you know, one way or another, you're going to pay the price, whether it's good or bad, you're going to pay something. <laughs> there's going to be consequences, and there's going to be some bad along with the good, and <laughs> you're going to have to pay it. <laughs> You know, I understand that, and I've got to thank Dave for inviting me into his bedroom. I don't often get invited into a man's bedroom. I have a couple of times with a woman, but Dave, thank you very much for that. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right now, you're right here. Well, it, it, it's not my bedroom. It's a, it's a family member. So that's my way of saying, you know, it's better, it's better than you know, a husband and wife, his and her bunk beds. <laughs> Anything can happen in this world these days. Uh, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, joined live today by Stonebolt, iconic band coming out of, of course, yes, Canada. You're right here. Let's do it. Here's the price of love. I worked with Pink Floyd for a little while. We did a concert here in New Zealand and I was their engineer. Ah yeah, very nice. Yeah, I got a... that. That that could not have been an easy mix to do. Uh, it was all in um, uh, quad. Every, everything was all in this brand spanking new equipment that I've never, I'm used to working stereo. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not used to working the equipment they had, but. Uh, I was lucky enough okay. to be on the, in the right place at the right time. Their engineer had actually come down with a, a disease called not allowed into the country due to drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they needed an engineer and I got the nod. So uh, I was lucky enough to be able to do it. At a place called nice. West, Western Springs. Packed house. Yeah, that's going soon. Yeah, it is. It's going to be turned housing. into housing. Yeah, it's... Hi Sharon, I've got a date for you darling. Yes. You're cool. coming up in November. I'm doing that over the weekend. Ooh, busy. Guys, <laughs> Look at I gotta let you know, um, it's not easy getting an interview here with hey, us here at Galaxy. I mean, poor Barbara, she gets about 30 to 50 bands a day wanting to do the interviews, do the promotions, do all sorts of things. Uh, so she's got to whittle it down because we only have a certain amount of time in a week to be able to do these. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They reach um, out to us. Appreciate it. And uh, then she takes it to production and production and Barbara, they sort of argue and whittle it down a bit more. Then it goes to a board meeting and believe me, there could be anything between eight and 12 people at the board. Uh, and their only concern is it's got to be good for our image. Your name was self-explanatory with all of them. They all knew who you Hi, were. Dwayne. So that was a ticker box straight away, you know what I mean? Hi, Dwayne. Um, and yeah. then Barbara brings it to me. Hey in a USB kind of deal and I play you in my car <clears throat> now I gotta let you know there's two reasons why I do that uh, first reason is I've got to do the interviews so I want to hear it without anybody else's influence you know what I mean do yeah. I want to interview yeah. this band and believe me I get no information just the music no title no artist nothing you know so I'm yeah. playing you away in my car oh by the way the second reason is well, nobody else wants to drive with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true. Even Barbara doesn't want to do it. Her son is a New Zealand champion or former New Zealand champion car racer, right? Her grandson is a current New Zealand champion car racer. She won't get in the damn car with me. <laughs> 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 oh, you got to wonder, eh? Dwayne Watson's on board. Hello, brother man. Nice to have you on board, my friend. I am enjoying the ride that you're taking us on with your musical career as well. Keep up that good work. And, and say hi to Willie, too. Happy birthday to him the yeah, other day, wasn't it? Birthday. Happy birthday, yeah, didn't he, Willie? Yeah, he celebrated a birthday. Good old day. Yeah. Uh, Dwayne Watson's coming out of Canada as well. We, we know a lot of Canadians, guys. We really do. Oh, that's cool. And uh, I want to talk to you after this 
um, about putting you guys into a magazine, if that's okay. Certainly. Of course. Um, now, let me explain that. There's a friend of ours. He has a an indie magazine. He, he promotes indie, indie bands and stuff. Um, he comes out of India. In the region where he is, there's about ah. 8 million people. And just frankly, I think he knows each and every hey, one of them Steve, by first how name. how are you? <laughs> Thank you for joining us again, Steve. Steve Lynch is on board. Yeah. Okay, uh, former lead guitarist for Autograph is and on board. Jimmy's here and Jimmy's here as well. And Jimmy's here as well. The former and the new guitarist yeah. are joining us. Um, nice. But I'll, I'll talk to you more about the magazine afterwards because, believe me, um, hey, fantastic Jimmy. magazine we it is. We need to catch up. And it's all about promoting and Steve. Ball. Wow, this is cool. I don't know whether I should tell you this or not, but I know a couple of things. And one of those couple of things is that uh, you know Dwayne Watson. I don't. I don't think. Uh, he says, uh, Ray, play guitar in one of my songs. Oh, um, what song? Okay, uh, Dwayne, what song? Yes. <laughs> tell me. We, we will get to the bottom of this. We really, really will. Uh, Donnie Coulter's joined us as well. Nice to have you on board, Donnie. And, of course, we got the former and the current lead guitarist from the band Autograph, both Steve Lynch and Jimmy Bell, uh, joining us this morning as well. And, Jimmy, I really want to have a chat to you in the near future, uh, you and Randy, okay? Really want to catch up. But, in the meantime, uh, Wounded Warriors, Steve Studio. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, that was recent, yeah, yeah. Um, I just didn't put the name to to the song, but yes, absolutely. Maybe I should have said beard. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Uh, of course, uh, Dwayne Watson, we've known Dwayne for a number of years now, and he's even had a number one hit here at Galaxy. And then he says to me one day, Grant, I'm going to write a song about you. So I get the song, uh, you know, about a year and a half, two years later, I get the song handed to me. And uh, it actually has my name mentioned in it. And I went, nice. Dwayne, hold on. I thought you were going to write a song about me. He goes, yeah, well, it started out that way. And then my ego got on top of me. So, well, you're in it. <laughs> I I'm grateful. I am. And it's a damn good song, actually. Uh, well, uh, I haven't met Dwayne, I don't think. But um, you have to pass on a, a, a strong hello. Yeah, believe me. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll hook you up. What do you reckon? Okay. Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll get Dwayne to uh, to haunt your Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. Uh, he's a very talented artist in his own right. Now, Dave, uh, tell me uh, this COVID thing, and believe me, it's a pain as far as performing live and everything like that. Uh, but have you got plans of getting back on stage anytime soon? Um. Question back for you, at, at just in general or um, Stonebolt? As Stonebolt. Well, we'd, l we'd like to um, make us an offer. <laughs> well, the thing yeah, is that... Actually, we, you know, both Ray and I uh, and a couple of the other um, Stonebolt members from the recording era uh, are all still busy, you know, actively uh, involved in music. Uh, we're kind of spread out in different areas, but um, we all still enjoy gigging live. We all still enjoy writing and recording live. And it's just a matter of, you know, what what opportunities are presented and, and what areas open up for in-person shows that are feasible to do, you know, with uh, crowd limitations and financial limitations and all, all the good stuff that, that complicates matters these days. 
Yeah, you know, I understand that. I really, really do. Dawn Rex. Dawn Rex has joined us. Welcome along, Dawn. Uh, she was the young lady I was talking to prior to the uh, uh, the interview we're doing right now. Love, 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 Dawn Rex. So thank you for joining us. Uh, but what I'm kind of leading to here is that I can see a, a light at the end of the tunnel of this COVID thing where sooner or later we're going to be able to open up our borders and get back to work again. Barbara is the manager of a company called Aurora Entertainments that brings bands into the country. Uh, she does all the logistics, everything like that, a one-stop shop. Would you be interested in coming to New Zealand and playing in front of New Zealand audiences? Absolutely. Um, sure. I've always wanted to go there. Um, and, you know, we, we've talked about a reunion. Uh, we did a reunion uh, of sorts um, a year or so back. And it was totally great, and people remember the the band and the songs. But uh, to come to New Zealand would be a treat. Um, we would love to do that if we could work out all the details. You bet. Brilliant. Now I got a re uh, uh, a question coming from Sharon Marie White. She goes, "Do you guys enjoy collaborations?" I think she's looking at maybe trying to hit you up to do something with you guys. What do you reckon? Um, well. In terms of Stonebolt writing, it's it's mostly been David and I from the start. Um, you know, David's a, a, a great um, lyricist and and um, at, well, also also on the music level too. Um, so we're we've kind of got ourselves a bit of a a twosome going, like a Lennon McCartney thing, if you will. Um, however, having said that, I'm always open to suggestions. If we saw a really cool lyric or or, or a, a cool um, groove or something come across the desk, we would certainly look at it and consider it. Yeah, you, nothing wrong with Peter, Paul and Mary. Nothing's wrong with being a what? Nothing wrong with a bit of Peter, Paul and Mary. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <clears throat> it's thinking out of the box and I'll tell you what, uh, Sharon, we'll hook you up, okay? We'll get the guys and uh, get you to meet and you can explain it for yourself, basically. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, i got to let you know that so far uh, we've been getting a huge amount of requests for rolling down the highway. And um, I'm in the scheme now about 1,391 requests to the state since we've been playing it and it's climbing. So I reckon we should tell our audio audience all about it. How come the song's making such a popular impact? Um, you know, I remember, I actually remember writing that hook kind of thing in our, uh, in our rehearsal room, um, way back. And, uh, a lot of it was road inspired. Um, we were in a, in the early days, we were a, we were a bona fide road band. You know, we ate, slept and, and, and drank, uh, rock and roll on the road we at one point I didn't even have a home like I didn't even have a residence we were totally on the road we lived on the road yes. so so the uh, the song you know rolling down the highway is is kind of an homage to that you know when you when you're when you're kind of gypsies in a sense you know and you're listening to the radio and life is good and uh it's yeah it's kind of about the gypsy lifestyle I guess you know, and, and that, was, that was one of several Stonebolt songs, um, that one most particularly, that people have said to us over, over the years, you know, why was that never released as a single or properly promoted as such? And looking back on it now, you know, when, you know, when you're in the midst of things and you, and, and you got a ton of tunes, I mean, there's some that just hit you across the face and, you know, that that's going to be a single or... Or this one is 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 cool, but it's too strange. It's an album cut, and then there's other ones that you know we were we were really in kind of a, a good melodic um, run at that point, and uh, you know Ray knocked that one out of the park, and it's always gone over well live too. People loved it live, and you know it's one of those ones where the management, but more often the label itself would say. Uh, okay, you know, we want to release this song as a single, and this one is the next single, and we were, we would try and steer them over to, 
ones that we preferred and they would kind of pull us back and this push and pull thing and that one never got the uh, shot it should have. Yeah, I agree with that, yeah. Well, I gotta let you know guys, believe me, they are absolutely loving it here at Galaxy and they're not shy about letting us know. So right now, here, joined live by the boys from Stonebolt, yes icons, here is Rolling Down the Highway. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me guys, I understand, I really do Ray, I, I travelled around for 36 months with an Australian band all around the world. Uh, I've got to be honest, uh, they started to look identical, every every city we went to had the same kind of deal, you know what I mean, you got an airport, they all look the same, oh god, it was fantastic. Yeah, where's, where's the laundromat? <laughs> <laughs> well actually no, we didn't need that because we had a valet. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Every t we had a huge staff, literally three stages that used to leapfrog each other. And right. oh, um, yeah. um, we, we did some big stadium stuff. It was with an Australian band with four letters to their name. Um, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you might figure it out. Uh, it starts with I, not A. <laughs> not A. Uh, a, they're friends of mine. I, well, wow. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Hi Jane. Jane! One ugly cowboy. Hello darling, nice to have you on board. Gosh, it's been a while. Too, um, too long. Too long. Yeah, well, too long between drinks. Hi Jane. Um, yeah, honestly, I, I know what it's like mm, when you are uh, talking about rolling down the highway. I mean, buses, planes, trucks, you name it. What a menagerie. It was fun. It was. I'm glad I did it when I was young. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm only 21, guys, but this is what radio <laughs> does to you. <laughs> yeah, right. Literally, literally. <laughs> right. Um, just while we're talking in between songs and stuff, you guys aren't vegans, are you? Vegan? You're not vegans? No. No? no. You're meataholics like me? Pretty much. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm kind of in between, um, you know. Okay. What? If it's, if it's meat, then it's going to be good meat. Yeah, yeah, I get, I get that. But have you ever, David, have you ever tried a vegan sausage? I don't think I have, no. What about you, Ray? No. no the only reason why I'm asking is, well, are they made out of real vegans? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was disappointed at the girl guide deal. They weren't made of real girl guides. That really upset me. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah. How many babies does it take to make a bottle of baby oil? Oh, all of them. <laughs> all of them. Oh, this sausage. is mad. Yeah. Hey, well, I, I was actually talking cool. to a couple of vegans the other day on an interview, I'm and I said, you know, guys. Too. Do you guys actually congregate? Do you go out and have a few drinks? And he went, why? And I says, because the only place to ever see you is on the news. <laughs> but do you actually do that? He goes, yeah, we go out. And I says, okay, so you have a few drinks. What if you get upset with each other? Do you, do you end up in the car park having a fight? And is it still called having a beef? <laughs> yeah. Purchase I hear you, brother. Donnie Coulter purchased a leg of lamb that came from New Zealand today. Oh, I hope well, that's that good eating. Yeah, well, that's good cook, eating. Cook it right. Don't overdo Slow it. it. <laughs> the best yeah. thing out of a woman's mouth is how much was it? <laughs> and and yeah. do it in an oven bag. <laughs> That's right, you're right, Eric Galaxy 107 FM, and it's nice to know, Donnie, that New Zealand meat is getting to your part of the world as well. Uh, enjoy, it's good eating. It really, really is. Uh, now, having said that, I'm joined by two iconic legends in their own right from the band Stonebolt, and, well, you know them, yes, over there in Canada. These guys have been around for a little while now, a couple of weeks, actually, really. 
literally. Yeah. Now, guys, what do you see for the future? Uh, for, for what you're doing right now, do you, are you going to be working as Stonebolt? Are you going to be working as a twosome and, and rebranding again? What's holding for you guys? Well, um, we, we did release a brand new uh, product, um, which you mentioned earlier. Uh, it's called Back on the Bottom Line. Um, so we do have plans for that. Um, and David and I have also had it on our to-do list to... Uh, to put a new uh, Stonebolt record together. Um, it's, it's just got to carve out the time and, and meet up in, in the same town. Um, but um, back in the bottom line, it's kind of a funny story because it was it was found in the vault. Um, it was a song we had on hold years ago, and it got lost in the vaults. And, and when I moved houses, I dug out this old two-inch master reel, and there was this song called Back in the Bottom Line, uh, I threw it up on, on a machine, and lo and behold, it actually worked. Transferred it to digital, got all the original members to come back in and overdub their parts. So it's it's the original drums and bass, and then all new vocals and uh, new parts on top of it. So it's kind of like an old song resurrected, like a, like a phoenix out of the ashes uh, comes this song. And it's very appropriate to, to Stonebolt material, and it rocks. And I absolutely love it, and it's kind of like it, it found new life again. So what that did is it kind of lit a fire under our butt to, to finish up the, the new album. That, yeah. That's really cool, Nick. Yeah. Rick did a wonderful job of, uh, of recording my vocals and uh, his and Brian's vocals and, um, and, of course, killer guitars. And John Webster um, recorded uh, all new keyboard parts and... Uh, in Vancouver and did a great mix on it and it's ready to see the light of day. You know, I, I absolutely love that. Now, Angie coming out of Scotland, in fact, uh, out of Edinburgh in Scotland, says, <clears throat> guys, what is the single most memorable part of Stonebolt's career? The most memorable part? Um, well, for me, it's the LA days. When, when we first got sent to LA, um, you know, and we hit LAX and come out of the airport and some guy was holding up a sign that said Stonebolt and there was a limo waiting for us. And at that point we kind of knew, okay, we're serious. <laughs> and, uh, and then, and then we played, uh, we played a bunch of shows in LA and one of them was uh, midnight special with Wolfman Jack. And I remember, uh, I remember meeting the wolf and, he, he, you know, he was saying, yeah, you guys got to meet the wolf cub, which was his kid. And, uh, you, you, you know, we just kind of, kind of joined the L.A. family. And, and that to me was, I, I remember it as, as a highlighted time, you know. Yeah, to, to me, same, same here. We also had a chance to do um, American Bandstand with Dick Clark. And sitting in the makeup room in the chair right beside him, um, you know, having a conversation, seeing, you know, and uh, after having grown up watching him on, you know, teen dance shows when I was a little kid and all that, and by that time he was an, an international icon. Um, that, and just like Ray says, that the L.A. lifestyle that we got to have a, a, a nice little drink of while we were there, um, the label used to put us up at, at the infamous Continental Hyatt House, uh, a.k.a. the Riot House, on Sunset <laughs> Strip. And we had a few uh, a few high times around that point of, of our career. So, yeah, that was way up there on the memory list. That's really, really cool. Now, Ray, uh, believe me, uh, I go back to the days of Reed, uh, to uh, Rick Dees, of course, uh, uh, and a number of other huge, huge radio announcers, but I've always idolized the Wolfman, you know what I mean? So somebody who's yeah. got to meet the guy, uh, let me say from the start, whoa, you know, but yeah. that would be a memory that you just couldn't give away, isn't it? It, it truly is, yeah. Believe me, uh, and uh, uh, one of my favorite DJs from back in the day too was also Casey Kasem, you, you know what I mean? So. Uh, 
We we love American top forty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Uh, but I got to say, Ray, uh, good attempt at uh, taking off the Wolfman. That was that was not bad. I like that. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, now at the same time, we were talking about bottom line. I better let you know uh, that so far, and believe me, it's your second most requested song. You're getting right up there over the four thousand mark, if you know what I mean, and it's climbing. 4,512 so far, and still climbing. So it's making a monicum of success here at Galaxy. Better play it, I think. So, uh, being told by the boss, let's move it on. Here is Stonebolt and Bottom Line. Are you guys familiar with uh, the Galaxy Artist page on Facebook? No, that's probably uh, not. No. No, I should be. Uh, yeah, you should be, because uh, for a start it's free, but please, please, please use it. It's um, it, it's there for artists to advertise anything. If you've got a new poster or a logo, a new song, a new video, uh, the opening of a shoebox, use yeah. it, because we have so Don't many sure. people. <laughs> yeah, we have so many people go there, look through it, uh, and participate, if you know what I mean. Now, the thing is, they could be right. record oh, labels, they could be venue okay. managers and people looking for entertainment, right down to somebody common like myself, you know. So, uh, please, it's where the fans go to have a look and see what you guys are about. Yeah, we'll definitely check it out. Very cool. Um, I'll send an invite. Barbara said she'll send an invite. Okay. Yeah. And it'll be a pleasure to have you guys on there. It really will. Um, I, I don't mind if you send a photo giving me the bird or something. This one's for DJ Grant. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent a couple of funny ones to David this morning. You, oh, you sent a couple of funny ones yeah, to David this morning? Yeah. Okay. Were they, yeah. Were they cartoons? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> taste of what's to come. A taste of what's to come. Yeah. And he's still all right. He didn't yeah. scare him away. No. That was classic. He's looking in wonder, though. Uh, are you guys familiar with... Um... <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, with Darth Vader. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, from Star Wars. You remember that lightsaber thing he had, a sword? Well, that's me. Yeah. Yeah, that's like Barbara and one of these things. Oh, oh, no, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh. Um, yeah. It's a hard... Yeah, Sorry, guys. It's a hard hat area, literally. You gotta move fast, otherwise you get clocked <laughs> by it. <laughs> Apparently, have you been clocked before? That's why I'm saying it. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like many of us old guys say. Thank God there weren't cameras in everybody's phones back in the day, or we never could have got away with anything. <laughs> okay. So that means no hope for the kids today then, doesn't it? <laughs> that means they've got to be craftier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ingenuic. <laughs> When's your book ready for us? Because we want to oh, hear yes, what you used yes, to get up absolutely. to. Just like they're going, hint, hint, hear absolutely. what they We're used just, to do. Barbara's just talking to Steve Lynch. He's about to release his book. Um, about the naughty things he used one of to the, do. You see, he writes books about guitar work and everything like that, you know. But this time he's doing a memoirs thing and letting everybody know what he got up to and on Jimmy the road, you know. I, I think it's a confessions, basically, and I want to get involved in that. He's promised me a signed copy, so I want to find well, out what is what Dave just how said. naughty Steve was. And yeah. Dave, <laughs> da Dave, they're going to tell us something. Well, maybe you Come don't. On. <laughs> Come on. Oh, believe me. Uh, I, I would you. never write a book, literally. I'm going to write Pe one. People, Barbara says she's going to write a book about me, but believe me. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, you, might end, you might end up in jail. <laughs> yeah. Either that or get out, back payments for paternity or something like that, you know what I mean? That's <laughs> right. Oh, there's no names. <laughs>
isn't it weird when the staff behind the scenes want photos? Literally. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, there is a number of people in the room here that have been watching this whole interview as well. And believe me, my on-air producer, she goes, right at the very last moment, give me a photo. You know, a photo op. Uh, you'll get a copy of it. And I apologise now, okay? Uh, I saw the pose, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah, well, you, you'll be able to put it on your wallpaper on your phone or something, you know, show your friends, you know, Kiwis. Not healthy, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Uh, now, we this, love you, Kiwis. Well, thank you. Here's, yeah. here's one for you. You guys are Canadian. Uh, you might appreciate this. Uh, you guys over there have a McDonald's, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have the big Canadian breakfast? At McDonald's? Mm, no. Do you just call I it breakfast? I think so. Okay, well here in New Zealand we have a thing called the big Kiwi breakfast, right? And uh, ah. a number of weeks ago I was in uh, uh, one of the close cities to us, Whakatani. I was in a uh, McDonald's there and there was two Canadians being served by this pretty little lady behind the counter and she looks at them and she goes, would you like a... Uh, Big Kiwi breakfast. And this first Canadian, he goes, hold on, Kiwi's a uh, protected bird. You, you can't eat those. How dare you, lady? You know, come on, you can't do that. And she looks at him and goes, oh, okay, uh, Canadian, right? <laughs> and then she looks at the guy next to him, right? And she goes, what about you? And he goes, just a small one. Well, wherever there's oh. one, there's another, uh. literally, <laughs> right here at Galaxy. Uh, now, guys, and, and I want to let you know this, I am finding it hard to get through a breakfast show, and literally, I do a breakfast show starting about 5 o'clock in the morning through until 10 in the morning, uh, and the breakfast show is primarily made up of requests from the day before, literally. Uh, the receptionists and everything collate all the stats that go through to production, production, go through it and create a breakfast show and in the mornings I come into work uh, usually about midnight uh, I sit there with production and we approve the whole show so it's pretty much designed around our listeners and what they desire the reason why I'm getting to this is that just recently I seem to be finding myself not getting it through a breakfast show without playing at least one or two Stonebolt songs why am I doing this? Uh, you, you've been bitten by the Stonebolt bug. <laughs> well, I, I kind of feel that our audio audience, I don't call them fans, uh, our audio audience, and I'll give you the stats of how many were online when we finished this interview. They are the ones that command pretty much the breakfast show, you know what I mean? So I, I don't think it's me that's been bitten by the Stonebolt bug because I've been bitten by that way back in 1978. You know, oh, okay. I'm a, I'm a die-hard, old-core fan of Stonebolt, but I think the rest of the world has suddenly started to get behind the Stonebolt movement again. And I'm telling you right now, literally, 5,077 requests so far, but don't you hide it. What's the secret to this success? Well, first of all... Thank you to all the guys and gals out there that uh, are digging on our music, whether whether you knew us back in the day or wh whether you're just discovering and now we uh, totally appreciate it. Yeah, Don't You Hide It had a magic vibe to it when, when we when we first wrote it. Uh, it was another one that, that came out of that rehearsal studio that we had in North Vancouver. Yeah. And... Uh, we started that groove and started jamming around it, and, and all of us kind of perked our ears up and went, oh, got something here. Um, you know, David wrote a great lyric. Uh, we put a bunch of cool harmonies to it. It was a, We listed it as a full band written song, so all band members got credit for it. Um, but it, it had a magic. It had a magic right from the start, and I think that, that magic vibe is just carried through. And, and like David said, we certainly appreciate any new uh, recruits to the Stonebolt cause? Well, uh, guys, and I've got to be honest with you, uh, it was Barbara who first brought Stonebolt to the foreground, and uh, as soon as she says, here, have a listen to these guys, I went, Stonebolt, I, I know these guys. I've known them from, you know, when I still had spots on my face, literally back in the day when I was 
doing 7 inch and 12 inch records and recording on DAT and stuff like that so uh, believe me I know this this band and she goes well we better get into it and start playing it we start playing it it blows up our internet literally everybody all at once wanted to know more and basically they were saying when are you going to be doing the interview literally so you guys are not for a minute forgotten around the world anywhere and it is such a pleasure to be able to see a landslide of people coming back just telling me how good and their memories of Stonebolt are. You know what I'm saying? Well, that, yeah. that is that is just so great to hear. And uh, again, we very much appreciate you putting it out there and uh, and you and you mentioning that it, it's um, it's uh, a very heartfelt thank you. Well, yeah, it, it does it does mean a lot to us and. Uh, Thanks so much, Barbara, for, uh, you know, for being our advocate and, you know, getting getting Grant involved with us and, and the whole thing. Much appreciated. Well, it's a pleasure for us as well. And as I said at the top of this, my friend, very, very humbled to meet you. Finally, I've been playing your music forever. You know, it's like meeting, finally, you. one of your heroes. Well, one of your icon heroes, somebody that you've emulated over the years. Uh, so for me as well, it is an absolute pleasure to be able to do this. Uh, Barbara, well, she turned a bit pink there. I think it was a reflection from her dress, but never mind. We'll work up on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, my friends, as I say to you, it is becoming more and more increasingly noticeable that every morning I'm playing a Stonebolt song, and you can guarantee in the breakfast show, Don't You Hide It, is one of the songs. You're right here at Galaxy. <laughs> This is long hair music. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, man. That's so cool. Um, yeah, we sure do appreciate Grant. You, you, uh, you know, not only playing it, but letting us know that you, what what kind of a reaction you're getting from your listeners. That, that's that's very meaningful. Yeah. Well, the thing is that it, it, oh, what, what's happening here? I don't know what um, you're doing. Can I have it? I didn't touch it. <laughs> um, the, the thing is, believe me, it has become a landslide of information coming from people saying, hey, listen, you, you're playing Stonebolt. I remember when. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Okay. Oh, good. Yeah, believe me, I, I, I'm getting quite a lot of that. I really, really am. Stop thumping but it's, around. I didn't touch it. I think you're thumping around. I'm, I'm thumping around. Great show, friends, but I have to go finishing a mix. Have a great evening. Yeah, Donnie. Uh, enjoy your mixing. One of my favourite things. It really is. I love mixing. Um, cakes? No, not <laughs> cakes. <laughs> Barbara. I have to get that in the music cake. industry, right? Yeah, we, we don't do food. <laughs> we have people do food. But having said that, we were talking to Ben Click the other day, and he was right into doing food, wasn't he? Yeah, turkey pie. My mum would have loved that young man. Yeah. She would have. My mother used to be a head chef for the politicians here in New Zealand, down in Wellington. <coughs> and, and oh, yes. In a restaurant called Bellamy's back in the day. Um, she was, well, if you know any chef, you'll know exactly what my mother was like. You know, very pedantic, very to the point... Oh, so that's why you turned out like this. Yeah, I, I rebelled. I didn't want anything to do with food. No, I see. <laughs> I, I hated it. I really and it did. carried on to everything else? Well, no, she tried to force you into being a chef, and I didn't want to be no, a chef. Nah, well, My father was an explosives nah. expert. Now, there's another crazy deal altogether. It, yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. He really was. Um, oh, well. Mine yeah. was too. I'm sure these were. He, he used to blow things up for places like the coal mines or the, doing road working or um, forestry or something like that. Um, roads. <laughs> but he also used to... His version of fishing is you didn't need any poles. Oh, yeah? Yeah, no, you took How'd that work? <laughs> uh, pretty good, actually. A true story. The old man says to me one day, because he worked right up in the hills, right? We're going to go up to one of the lakes up there and go fishing. I went, oh, sweet, yeah, okay, so we load up the boat on top of the uh, roof rack of the car, and it 
today you would call them a tinny or, you know, back in those days it was a wooden one, right? <clears throat> so we're driving up these hills and I'm looking out and I'm thinking, where's the fishing poles? The old man goes, fishing poles? Who needs fishing poles? And I'm thinking, well, this is going to be fun, oh, sure. right? So we get out in the middle of this lake and the old man pulls out a stick of dynamite. He chops it into three, <laughs> sticks them in these dead heads, right? And he's got a stogie cigar. And he lights it, and he's sitting there talking to you. My eyes were glued on his hand. <laughs> you know, he's just sitting there, tosses it into the bloody water, boom, like he's hunting bloody U-boats or something, right? Yeah. And he looks at me and he goes, all right, I got the fish. You go and get them. <laughs> Let's wrap this up, guys. <laughs> Galaxy, Galaxy, That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, 27 away from 1 o'clock, it is 25 degrees. Yes, Barbara wins the uh, DJ prediction for the weather today, mm, and for the week actually, it is Friday. Coming into a brand spanking new weekend, October 15th, and today I have been absolutely loving it. I have, because... I've met some of my icons for once that I've followed through the years as a radio announcer uh, right up until today. Never thought I'd ever meet them. So elated, very, very humbled, and it has been an absolute pleasure to talk to Dave and Ray from the band, yes, yeah, Stonebolt, coming out of Canada. Uh, guys, don't go anywhere just yet. We do have to wrap this up, but thank you. On my behalf and everybody here in the studio, thank you so much for joining us here at Galaxy. Uh, just one more question for you. Will you come back again? Will you release more music with us? Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, if you need a psychiatrist or maybe a counsellor, I know a couple of good ones as well. <laughs> we might need them. Yeah, believe me, you may do. Uh, especially if you're going to come to New Zealand. I've got to warn you, we're kind of crazy here. And I'm all about shenanigans, so I hope you're on your game, okay? <laughs> you are about shenanigans, yes. Oh, yeah. believe me, believe me, this is nothing. Wait until you meet me in person. Yeah, right, you got it. Yeah, you'll bring, be, us, bring us over. Yeah, but believe me, if you meet me in person, you'll be wanting to leave in no time as well. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like Dave, the last time he came to New Zealand, he stopped in for a beer and left again. Uh, but we've got good beer. Oh. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> what was it, the Corrie Lounge in Auckland? No. <laughs> Airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, it the, uh, was it the bar there called the Corrie Lounge? I remember very little of it, man. <laughs> yeah, New Zealand beer does that to you, yes, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> but it's better than saying anything else, it really is. Uh, but hang in there, guys. We're going to do a couple of crazy photos next. And... Uh, Barbara will make them all into a movie and everything like that. For everybody else that's joining us oh, and have sense. joined us today on Facebook Live, got to thank you so much. Uh, if you're going to watch it a little later on over there on YouTube, you know what to do, right? No, you do? Really? Yeah. Sub, thumb, bell. Bingo. Uh, bell, notifications for when we have royalty like Stonebolt joining us. In the meantime, have a very happy and successful weekend. I'll see you again next week. Take care, folks. Uh, hang in there, guys. But in the meantime, let's go back over to the old studio. You're right here in Galaxy. Good morning. Hey.